Hi, and welcome to Sensory Percussion 2 Drum School, your guide to the software component of the Evans Hybrid Sensory Percussion Sound System. In this video, we're going to check out three different views of Sensory Percussion 2. Play, Edit, and Mix. Each view has a different purpose, and the view you choose depends on how you want to interact with your set at that moment. Play view allows you to make quick on-the-fly adjustments to your set while performing. Edit view is where you can build from scratch and dive into all the sound design possibilities of the software. And mix view allows you to make detailed mixing and routing decisions about your sounds. So first, let's check out play view, which is the front page of Sensory Percussion 2. In this view, you have some easily accessible top-level controls over things you might want to tweak during a performance. The amount of control you have over your sounds in play view is more limited than in edit view, and that's intentional. As the name implies, it's designed for playing or performing existing sounds, so you can't create new modules or delete existing ones. But if you're trying out one of the hundreds of presets in the core library, play view lets you quickly see what's included in the set and adjust some settings. So let's start with the macros down here. Macros allow you to control multiple effects or a single effect mapped to multiple parameters with one control. All the sets in the core library come with some macros already created. So if I play some tonal sounds, and then I turn up the tonal delay, we can hear that that's applied to multiple sounds. In the same way, if I turn up the drums delay and then play the hi-hat layer, we hear it applied to the hi-hat. And then if I play the snare, which is a different layer, it's also been applied to that layer. Now let's move to the virtual inputs. In play view, virtual inputs allow you to monitor which zones of which drums are sounding. Or in the case of analog or MIDI inputs, they allow you to monitor the signal that's passing through. So if I play the center of Tom 1, we see that light up. If I play the rim, we see that light up. Virtual inputs can also be used to audition the sounds on different zones. So you can hear which sounds are assigned to which zone just by clicking on that zone of the virtual input. Now let's move to the layer mix on the right. This is basically like a condensed version of the layers that you'll see in edit view. So you see every layer that's included in the set and you can make adjustments to the volume, the panning, or you can mute or unmute individual layers, or you can make those same adjustments to the entire set. You might've noticed that when I select a layer, the macros change. That's because now we're looking at the macros that are applied only to this layer. So if I turn up the delay on the hi-hat layer, we hear that, but if I play the snare, we don't hear that delay. So if I wanna go back to set level macros while I'm looking at layer level macros, we just hit this X button. And now we can see our set level macros again. In the top center of play view is the set title and description. So if you click more, you can read the entire description and sets in the core library come with a brief overall description of the set, as well as some notes on what type of sounds are on which zones and some suggestions on how to control them. But you can also delete this and make your own notes. And if you want to collapse this, you can click this arrow. And finally, we have set styling, which refers to the look of the set in play view. And each set has its own custom artwork that differentiates it from other sets in the library. But you can customize this yourself by right-clicking on the artwork. Now you can change the color settings of the background gradient. You really have a lot of fine-tuned controls here, and you can really go wild. You can also change the blend mode of the image itself. Or you can choose your own custom image to use as the background. And if it's an image like this that has no transparency, 
you can stretch it to take up the entire screen. Edit view is the heart of sensory percussion too. This is where you can build your sonic universe from scratch, with fine-tuned controls at every level. So let's start with the most important section of edit view, which is the layers section. In these sonic layers, you can combine the various modules that make up your set, which include samplers, controllers, effects, MIDI generators, analog inputs, pretty much anything you use to make your music can be found in these layers. And in play view, you see a simplified version of this where you can only adjust the mix of each layer. But in edit view, you can dig down deep into a layer and make adjustments at any level, whether that's to an individual sample at the end of a layer or top level adjustments that will affect everything below it. For more information on how modules and layers work, check out our intro to modules video. In edit view, macros are found in this collapsible window, and they work pretty much the same way as they do in play. If I go back to play view, you can see these are the same macros, but a different view. The main difference is that edit view allows you to create and delete macros. So you can create either a knob, a slider, a toggle, or a trigger. Similarly, virtual inputs exist in a collapsible window in edit view, and they also work the same way in edit and play view, allowing you to monitor which zones are currently playing, and also audition sounds on different zones. Sensory percussion creates virtual inputs for you based on how you assign filters to your modules. So if I go to a module, and create a kick to filter, we'll now see a kick to virtual input. Mix view is all about getting that perfect sonic balance between the layers of your set. It also allows you to create submixes for routing out of your portal interface outputs. So the main section of mix view is the layers here. This has the setup of a mixer with volume faders, panning knobs, and mute buttons for each layer. But whereas with a traditional mixer or DAW, each of these would be restricted to its own channel, in Sensory Percussion 2, any combination of these layers can be sent to multiple audio destinations across multiple channels. And that's where submixes come in. What we're looking at right now is this main mix, which includes all of the layers of the set by default. If I want to create a submix, I will click Add Submix. Now I have an empty mix, and I can choose which layers to add to it. So I'm going to add a hi hat and this notes layer. So now we have this submix that exists, but we have to route it to our outputs. So I'll go back to my hardware outputs, and if I want to send it out of my headphones, I'll change the source from main mix to mix out one, because that's where I created this mix bus. So now we should hear the notes and hi-hat sounds. Now if I delete the hi-hat sounds from this submix, we only hear the notes. So I'm gonna change back to main mix. And now we're looking at the main mix again. And the final section of mix view is the set effects, which can be opened or closed with this arrow. The set effects window only exists in mix view, and it allows you to add effects that will be applied to all of the layers in your set. These effects are applied at the last stage in the signal flow, after the effects that you've created in edit view. The sets that come as part of the core library have some mastering effects applied by default. These include some light compression, EQ, and limiting. So that's it for the three views of Sensory Percussion 2. Hopefully now you have a better idea of which view you should use at any given time. Stay tuned for more tutorial videos, and thanks for watching.